I put out a call on Facebook for women to share their stories, and Lauren Maroney volunteered. She lives in Madison Heights, is married, has a super cute six-year-old named Jameson. This is Jameson. Hey, Jameson. How are Hi. you? She got to work from home during COVID, but her employer in August said it was time to get back to the office. With school shut down, that left Jameson in Zoom kindergarten at home. If the school's not open, I don't necessarily have somebody that can just come to my house and watch them. All our, you know, our family works. Um, so we, we needed some, you know, we needed childcare. <laughs> I was really upset mm -hmm. that they wouldn't let us go home and work. And I was just, that I felt like we just were being punished because we had a kid is how I felt. I've never been an unemployed like that where I've had to ever collect unemployment or try to collect unemployment. Um, and I was, I was really scared. Lauren is one of the 865,000 women who dropped out of the U.S. workforce from August to September 2020 alone. Dr. Betsy Stevenson is a labor economist at the University of Michigan. What I was concerned about back last spring and we saw really come out was that these women who were trying to work from home or being laid off were dealing with kids who were at home. And we saw a lot of women going all the way back to last summer who just couldn't go back to their jobs even when they were recalled because they had kids at home. And we've seen women who've had to actually voluntarily leave jobs. And then we've seen other women just really struggling to hang on. And so I don't even think the pace of job loss and job leaving for women is over. So what are the numbers that we are looking at right now? Millions of women who have left the workforce or what are the, the most current numbers that we have? Well, the, the, the most current number is that we have nine and a half million fewer jobs today than we had at the start of the pandemic. And, you know, their women represent a slightly disproportionate share of those jobs. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics, there were 2.2 million fewer women in the workforce in October 2020 than in October 2019. Women participating in the workforce has dropped to 57 percent, the lowest level since 1988. Let's talk a little bit about, though, when we think about how far women had come in terms of equality in the workplace or closing the wage gap. Um, being able to be uh, picked for jobs up in higher management, CEOs? Well, let's start with a sort of glass half full perspective, which is that women have really been in ascendancy in the labor force. And so we went in to the pandemic with uh, the highest labor force participation rate of women with young children ever. They had more work experience than they had had in the past, and they had more education and skills than they'd had in the past. And there's another thing that we're layering onto all of that, which is women had started to reclaim their fertility. So you have these women in their mid forties who have more kids than the generation before them had, more work experience and are more committed to staying in the labor force. And yet all those kids they had now have nowhere to go. They have no childcare, they have no schooling. And that has created this big national crisis that's getting so much attention. We need this attention on it because it was really at a breaking point. We can't have women have more education than men, as much work experience as men, as committed to work life as men, and households being as formed by two working uh, adults and have the workplace policies that we have that were designed when there was always a stay-at-home spouse. We need paid leave. We need some workplace flexibility. We really need to rethink our approach to work and family. According to the recently released 2020 Women in the Workplace study by McKinsey and LeanIn.org, women are feeling more exhausted, burned out, and under pressure during the pandemic. 40% of mothers, compared to 27% of fathers, have added three or more additional hours of caregiving a day to their schedule. And one in four women are now considering leaving the workplace or downshifting their careers. This past year, hurt women so much in so many different ways. So it's number one that women make up the disproportionate amount of service workers who lost their jobs in this economy, and then the public sector jobs in this economy. Julie Cashin is the director of Women's Economic Justice at the Century Foundation. Especially women of color who are the essential workers who've been going to work every day without having 
childcare or school for their kids. And so women have really been struggling during this time. And the fact that we've never built a care infrastructure before COVID started has really caused a lot of that problem. A study that I did with Sarah Jane Glenn from the Center for American Progress and Amanda Novello from the Century Foundation found that we're at risk of losing about $64.5 billion on aggregate of women's lost wages from women having to cut back their work hours or leaving their jobs to provide caregiving. That's about the size of the GDP of West Virginia or New Hampshire. So we, we will lose an entire economic activity of a state if we don't solve this problem. But when we see women maybe even going back into the workforce, they're not even probably going to be making the same amount of money that they made when they came back or they can't go back into that same position. So basically, you know, unequal pay has means that women already were behind before this started. Women of color were behind even more. And, you know, caregiving is a huge part of that discrimination in general is a huge part of that. Occupational segregation is a huge part of that. And to your point, when women come back to work, they may not be able to get back to even where they had gotten before. And that might have already started in an unequal place. So we have a lot of work to do. Here in Michigan, white women make 78 cents on the dollar compared to men. Black women make 65 cents. Latina women even less at 57 cents. Analysts say it may be 2024 before employment for women returns to pre-pandemic rates. So how do we stop job loss, shore up child care, and get workplaces to embrace flexibility? I think this is absolutely the time that we're going to see real action. Caregiving, paid leave are really essential. And I, I think that this is now the, the moment in time when we're going to have to make those changes. Because it really, what we've seen is that women are essential to our labor force. And without childcare, we don't get the women that we've that we've trained, that we've invested in. We're not able to keep them attached to the labor force, and we're they're not able to make the progress in their careers that they deserve to make, given how much they've accomplished. We are already seeing some progress. So the American Rescue Plan included. Uh, the, the $40 billion to get us to the $50 billion that child care advocates, parents, and other experts have been calling for for the last year. So this is money that will help stabilize the child care sector. And we still then have more work to do to build back and build an actual child care system. For Lauren, it will have to come down to changing her job to meet the needs of her family, not necessarily her career path. I think when I go back into the work, try and go back to the workforce, what I would like to maybe do is try and maybe get a job if I can through the school district. Um, you know, so maybe that would be better to line up with like breaks and things like that. Or maybe I find a job that's a little bit more, either a permanent work from home job. So it doesn't matter if schools get shut down again, it doesn't matter. I will still be able to work from home. Maybe I have to shift what my priority is. And maybe it's not gonna necessarily be about the pay scale and what you're doing and maybe more about the hours and how conducive is this and if something like this happened again, because I don't want to do this again. I want to, when I go back, I want to work for, I want to make it very clear that I'm working for a company or a boss that is sympathetic to something like this. And I'm not going to have to lose another job because you're just not, you just want, you're looking at your bottom line and not what everybody else in the world is going through.